Hello, everybody. This is an interview with Rick from Goose and um, the uh, kind of the larger project is a conversation that would be relevant to the class that I'm teaching at Case Western Reserve University on drugs, religion, and mystical experience. I am Professor Deepak Sharma. I'm a professor of religious studies at Case Western Reserve University. I've also got an appointment in bioethics, maybe in philosophy. That's me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for the interest. Okay, sure. So, um, so do you do you know anything about like who I am and what the questions I'm going to ask you, or should I give you a little bit of an intro? Uh, I I, I know a little bit, but not that much. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll tell you. So I'm a professor of Hinduism and Indian philosophy, and I teach at Case Western Reserve University, which is in Cleveland, Ohio. Right? You played at the Agora there. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, just by way of Connecticut, I taught for a year at Conn College way back in like 2000. And I taught for one year at Yale back in like 2004, 2000, 2004, 2003, 2004. Um, and my interests now, you know, cover Hinduism, Sanskrit, Indian philosophy, cultural theory, and, and drugs and religion and mysticism, right? So I'm teaching a class this semester on drugs, religion, and mystical experience, okay? Oh. Yeah, right? So these are all really interesting things. And I, I imagine you've probably thought about some of these things. I've thought about them, yeah, for sure. Um, nice, very nice. So, so along these lines, I, you know, um, so I've, I've been to a few of your shows. I think I've been to five or six shows. I'm going to come to Kansas. I'll see you all in Kansas next week. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, only, yeah, only because I'm doing some work at the museum there. And so they're flying me out and I was like, send me a day early. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and what, uh, what I've noticed is that when you play and when you hit the jam, right? You close your eyes, right? So what I want to know, there's a whole lot of things there. Yeah. What I want to know is, where are you when you close your eyes? And, and I don't want to preempt it by, by, you know, I hope you can see where I'm going with that, right? Is that, where are you? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about anything? What space are you inhabiting? What thoughts do you have? Because you close your eyes and it's so, it's one, you, I mean, you close your eyes, many of us close our eyes and we enter something and you facilitate that, right? As you know, I think, right? So where are you though? Um, well, I, I would say it ranges, you know, it's not always the same thing. Um, but, you know, I, I'd say a, a sort of a blanket answer to that uh, in terms of intent is I'm um, trying to be, I'm trying to get out of the way. I'm trying to be a vessel. Nice. You're trying to be a vessel. A vessel, yeah. a vessel for what? Um, well, that's, that's where the mystery comes in, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, what do you, what, what, just put some words and throw some words into that if you can. If you can, I understand. And I'll get to that in a second. But that's great, Rick. Rick, um, I'm so happy to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't be sure. I know I have my ideas and, and beliefs, I suppose, of what's what's out there, you know, on on invisible to us. But you know, what what intelligences are are at play in in you know that we don't see. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll ask masters or angels or uh, certain things like that to try to help me. You know, I, I, I sometimes I forget to and wish I did before a show like last night. Um, oh, oh. But, um, you know, I, I uh, asking higher intelligences to help me get to that state and help me be a vessel and help me um, kind of serve a purpose serve my purpose um, with wow. elevating a room in some way or, or just opening, opening a heart in some way, or I don't know, you know, I, I think beautiful. I would say that I would say the heart opening um, 
is has a lot to do with it. You know, if the, if okay. just we can create movement and you know, there's so much in our world now that um, creates stagnation. I think in mm-hmm. in terms of people's experience and um, emotions and, and thoughts and and kind of just their their like real selves. I would say you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of that numbs. There's a lot of numbing agents all over yes. the world right now. You know, oh, so. Yeah. Um, if there's, you know, if someone could show up looking to party and have a good time and all of a sudden find themselves having some other kind of experience, um, where something that they weren't maybe expecting is moving, then that would be a six. That's, that's something that, uh, that's of interest to me. That's, that's why, you know, it has a lot to do with why I'm trying to do what I'm doing, I guess. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, so, so I, I was uh, um, listening to an interview that you that uh, I think that you and Peter gave last year, and you were saying that each show should be a different experience, right? It should be a totally different. And in my my, you know, I listen to all of your shows, and every show is completely different. Every jam is a completely different energy, and creates really different emotional responses, and really, di- or just really different responses. That that that, quite frankly, and I wonder if this is what you're aiming at. And I don't want to put words in your mouth okay so please tell me like that's not what you're thinking but but it always leads me to a place outside of language where i really can't describe it and can you can you speak i mean it's funny to ask you rick to speak about outside of language but can you speak to that uh i can i mean uh, i i think about it a lot because um music brings me places that is outside of language and um, it's, it's actually one of the biggest things I've been struggling with from a songwriting perspective for a long time, because I'll, you know, to me, what it, it feels like I'll receive a space or an idea or, a, or a, a piece of music, a, a piece of musical intent, I guess you could say. And it is alive to me. It's alive with all of these things that are outside of language, as you said. And then you know, I have to kind of, uh, you know, my, my instinct, I, I want the music to have lyrics and have vocals and, and tell, you know, to do something with that m- modality, you know? So it's, 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 it's a tricky thing, you know, writing to something that is beyond language um, in a way that doesn't dissipate its magic is what I've, what I've kind of been struggling to do for a while. So, um, you know, some people there's, there's, yeah, it's like these, that, that's why I've, I've been starting more and more to gravitate towards, um, yeah, more abstract lyrics, I guess. And, and things that are, you know, um, you know, some of the, some of my favorite artists now are all, all right, like fairly abstract lyrics and, and, you know, kind of the weirder they are, the more <laughs> I, it takes me out of my intellect and uh, that's the more into it I am, you know? I, I see. So interestingly, you're using language to get you outside of language. Trying to, you know, right. it's, 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 uh, it's, right. it's of interest. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Now I know that you've obviously been exposed to some Hinduism when you were in Colorado, you, you, you interacted with some ISKCON and just as a, an aside, how did you even run into them? Because you don't see ISKCON people at airports anymore. And like, where did, where did the overlap happen? Like, how did you meet these people? Um, I was, I was living in Fort Collins at the time. And one day I was just walking around town. Um, you know, it was, it was like, I could, it was a, a very, uh, tectonic period of, of my life, I guess I, I was, I was, mm-hmm. you know, a, a lot had, uh, I didn't know where I, you know, I was lost in a way, or I, I was kind of in a, in a big shift. I didn't know what, where I was going, what direction I was going in. I didn't know what to do with my life at that point. Um, so I was walking around town one day, just kind of being and, and I don't know, looking for things. I was probably looking for a job. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, they were playing in like in town in a little town square area. Um, they were just set up because they, they come, they, uh, they came up every Wednesday from Denver and oh, uh, did a, did a, did a, you know, Kirtan and, and, and everything at, at the uh, university, um, you know, right, right in town there. So they were, they were just kind of in downtown area before doing the afternoon session at, at the, at the university. 
and um, uh, I was just I was drawn to the music, you know. Initially, I had seen, you know, living in Boston, I had seen um, people in robes chanting Hare Krishna on the streets here and right. there, and right. um, actually, one one time, one a guy in a robe, you know, a, a guy in a robe came up to me and um, gave like back in back in Boston years ago. Um, gave me a uh, gave me a little pamphlet and kind of was he just he just looked at me and was like I think you should look into this nice. and I was like cool I don't I probably won't but thank you <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah. nice wow and so that sort of opened things up in an interesting way for you such that when you saw them in Colorado you're like oh, yeah. yeah I know this right they were these young guys they were they were really really good musicians both of them had studied music prior to um, mm -hmm. you know being becoming de devotees um and uh yeah i just became friends with both of them i you know one was a, a, a like really really good on the berdanga and the other one was really good on the harmonium and had a beautiful voice nice. and the 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 jams were incredible it was like they, it was i was like whoa this is this is so cool they they're like they were just they were just fantastic so i started going every wednesday and then the food the food blew my mind. I was like, "Whoa!" Like they, they really get you, you know. They, it, and then, the, and then the, it was like the food, and then the singing, and then the then the like cool conversations with people, with young people. It was it was it was super cool. I was just, uh, I got really into it, and uh, I started going down to Denver nice. uh, to to be a part of it more, and um, yeah, kind of just kind of went from there. Um, and then and then after a certain point. You know, I I got started getting more inside of it, and it started to feel more like the the, the claim claim the dogma isn't there, but then the dogma started to sort of show up, and I was kind of like, okay, I, I kind of naturally just get my distance. But I mean, I, I still uh, very much valued that experience, and and um, you know, there's 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 still a lot that. Uh, I would love to explore because I mean, obviously there's the, uh, cool. Vedic, you know, uh, it's, there's so, it's so rich. There's so, yeah, there's so many stories I would love to, uh, that I haven't read and haven't heard about. And I, I would love to explore it a lot more. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Once, once you see that it's as institutional as any other religion, then you're like, okay, <laughs> no, I get it. I totally, yeah. I get yeah. it. Um, so do you, do you, so that, so in terms of like this kind of spiritual dimension that you kind of embraced, like, so do you still have elements of like Hindu Vaishnava Krishna stuff that you think about or do, or is it now part of something else? Um, I would say it's now part of something else. I, I Frank, like to be totally honest with you, oh, I, I would oh, say, yeah. yeah, I would say I'm at a point in my, a phase in my life where I'm, mm -hmm. you know, very, uh, um, my attention is very much on the external, not, not oh. in like a vain way or anything, but like, you know, but the career is, is, yeah, is, time. is, a, um, uh, taking a lot of bandwidth, um, mm. and not really leaving much for, for the other pursuits, uh, that I was much more right. fixated on in my yeah. early twenties and mid twenties. Um, and that I will undoubtedly return to being fixated on, right. um, Right. It's kind of just that 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 time in life of of building, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and you are all building pretty rapidly <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting you say that, but I my guess is that during your jam, you're exploring that space again. Yes, yes. I mean that. Yeah, that is music is an internal yeah thing for me. Yeah. I you know I, I I seek inward when playing music. Like music is a vessel to seek inward to me. Nice. Well, we can see it. I mean, I see, like, that's why I asked. He closes his eyes. What is going on in there? And now I, I have a good sense. Um, thank you. Um, so, so you're, I, I, now this is a slightly, you know, you, you don't have to kind of speak too uh, openly about it if you don't feel comfortable. But, but as you know, historically, um, certainly with the time of the Grateful Dead, is that, 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 that kind of inhabiting those spaces that you're describing was facilitated by the use of, well, psychedelics, right? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had some uh, some thoughts about, well, you know, psychedelics and music and that space you're inhabiting. And for sure, you know, let's let's be honest that many of your fans are 
uh, engaging in experimentation that way and are inhabiting so many different worlds. And when, and of course, um, experiencing your uh, transmission of that when you're jamming. And I wondered if you could, if you could speak about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I haven't experimented with many substances. Um, my, you know, it's, it's tough. There's, there's a couple different viewpoints that mm -hmm. I have. I, I mean, obviously there are like, the substances open up doors, you know, they're, they're, they're capable of opening up doors to, you know, the astral plane and other, other planes that are, you know, we're not always as, you know, easily that are not as always easily access, accessible to us. Um, and, you know, it's easy. You take a thing and then all of a sudden you're feeling all these things, you know, and experiencing all these things that are, are, I, I know, I believe that they are happening all the time and, and it's just, our, it comes down to our ability to perceive them. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, I, I think about, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not well, I would not say I'm well studied when it comes to these types of things, but, um, there's, uh, I think there's like a Jesus quote. I think Jesus said something about, you know, being wary of the, of the many, of like the many back doors and back windows into the stable or into the barn or something like that, as opposed to going in the front door. Right. Um, right. and, uh, you know, like it's a shortcut. Um, but I, I constantly question if that, sh if the shortcut prolongs the, like, you know, inevitably delays you from going in the front door. Nice nicely played yeah so i mean when it comes to people having like these spontaneous uh -huh. enlightenments i i don't have any reason to you know not believe in i i mean like there's yeah. the story story of, like eckhart toll you know yeah, you yeah, the story? Yeah, yeah. yeah you bet yeah the, be the beginning of his book he tells his story where he's just you know so wrapped up in ego and so I mean, in his case, it was just like self-loathing and he, it was just his depression and all of his stuff was so bad and so bad and so bad. And then one day he just blacked out and fell asleep on his bed. He thought he was dying and he wake, woke up and, you know, the light coming through the window, you know, he, he, he had never felt such ecstasy from, from just experiencing the, a pencil and the light through coming through the window, you know, and all of a sudden he was just in this state and, uh, kind of, you know, stayed there for, for a long time. I, you know, I have no reason to disbelieve that that, you know, it seems like that was the real thing for him, you know? <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, so, it's interesting. What, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. That, that's it. So I was thinking about a, a lot of the songs that you've written and that Goose sings are about, uh, kind of journeys and transformation and journeys, but they're all slow journeys. They're not like suddenly like you're there, but like you're seeking and you move along and it's a slow process. And then of course, somewhere in there, you hit the jam and then, uh, then you attain something. We all attain something when that happens. But, but I think that this theme of the, 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 the hero on a journey is something that, that on a gradual journey is something that you, you seem to sing about and Goose seems to be singing about in general, right? You know, I mean, think about, I mean, Almeg is a classic example of this or a seeker on the radio. I mean, they're all classic examples of this. So, you know, I think that, you know, maybe you're trying to tell something to, to the, to, to, uh, to the, your Goose fans in a way that the gradual is, is essential to this. I think so. You know, um, I, it kind of became a conscious thing at a certain point to huh. steer away from, uh, you know, in my early twenties, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm sure maybe you've read at certain points. I, I experienced a lot of loss and a lot of trauma. Yeah. 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 And after that, I really, um, sort of devoted my life to this mission. I guess you could say it kind of rationalized what I had experienced by, making use of myself in that way which i don't know if it's i don't i, I don't know if it's a healthy thing for me <laughs> frankly <laughs> but um <laughs> but it's what happened so um you know at first for years i was trying to write these like very preachy songs and they were awful they're just like terrible songs you know um there's very uninspired and and 
and it was just like yeah do this do this do this like because because i and there's i don't know like i'm not what who am i to be you know i don't know what what the answers are just because i read you know just because i read the alchemist i know what what people should be doing like no you know <laughs> um so yeah it just at a certain point it took it was it was a very frustrating period because um it was it was all it was all i cared about it's all i wanted to do you know i was pushing and fighting so hard to form a band and write songs that were that were like meant something and that were meaningful and i could create these experiences and not just none of it was happening for so long um and uh you know, then finally a band came together and, and uh, started, you know, working with Matt. Matt was just like an incredible songwriter. And at, at, at that time, I was struggling to write. You know, I'd written a few things that were cool, but not, not many. And he was just like a, he was in a really great period then. Um, and we, you know, we've always worked really well together. When we get into the room together, we write. Like, it, it's, it just makes it easy. We, you know, the things where, like, he gets stuck on, I see right through and vice versa, you know. Um mm-hmm. So that, you know, that, that was happening for a while and thought that was going to take off. And then one day he woke up and said he didn't want to do it anymore. And, uh, that was kind of when I went to Colorado and I was kind of, I, you know, put all my eggs in that basket and I was like, man, I'm, I'm 23, 24. And I've been trying fighting at this for a long time and maybe I should pursue something else. And that's, you know, that's when (laughs) that was the point I was, I was really debating that. And, uh, wow. then I, you know, obviously arrived at like, no, I'm going to go back and just keep trying. Right. Um, right. That's when, you know, when we started Goose. But, um, uh, wow. But yeah, you know, at a certain point, I, it was after Vasudo kind of broke up that, um, that I started writing for me again. You know, oh. I, I, start, I started writing because it was, it was, it was at that point when I didn't have, it, it felt like, um, I didn't have, I, there was like nothing I had to write for. There was nothing wow. I had, wow. I had, there was nothing I had going for me, you know? Wow, and I was, I was just like, well, you know, that was when I finally rekindled my actual relationship with music or writing, I guess. Wow. Now yeah. you, you, in Indian river, you quote from the Bhagavad Gita in Sanskrit, right? But yeah. some of what you're talking about reminds me of that concept of Nishkama Karma acting without desire for the fruits of your actions. Hmm. Right. And so you were saying that when you were thinking about, you know, you were when you were goal oriented and you wanted to have it make a difference, that Hmm. nothing came fruitful of that. But the moment you let go of the desire for that, that that end results, then in Sanskrit, it was Nishkama Karma. You acted without desire for the fruits of your actions and consequently things kind of flourished for you. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say they flourish. I mean, you know. What's up? They, What's up? they didn't flourish externally. They flourished internally. Internally, absolutely. In, in terms of, you know, I finally had yeah. inspiration and had ideas that were, um, that felt alive, you know? How interesting. And with those those ideas that you had and the, the lyrics that you write, the same way you describe the kind of creativity, the improvisational creativity, where you're a vessel for something greater. Do you feel that when you write lyrics or in what you just described, do you feel like you, you, when you suddenly opened yourself up to something that was a, kind of, you were facilitating? Uh, some, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's, that's, that's kind of the, the thing that, uh, I think it's, I have like a mental block with it maybe, but, um, it's the thing I struggle with the most, I would say lyrically. Um, oh. and, uh, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's because I'm just, I have like a high bar, you know, I, my, uh, you know my my not not to say that my lyrics are great i don't you know they're i don't think they're great but it's the more so that like the experience of writing them is yeah. is i i have a you know like there there's there's certain things that i don't remember writing because it was just kind of it was just happening and you yeah. know <laughs> that kind of being the bar is limiting it is limiting. sort of because yeah, you can't yeah. sit down and work on songs that way. No, you can't, right? <laughs> like, that's right. It's really hard when that's your bar. When you're always yeah. waiting for that creative kind of epiphany. 
And yeah. right, right. It, it, it's, I was thinking, you know, it has to be the proper set and setting, but sometimes you can't uh, completely figure out what the set and setting is going to be. It just has to happen. Yeah. It's like, I have two hours on Tuesday from uh, 10 to 10 to one. And oh. uh, during that time, I'm going to black out and channel profoundly. <laughs> Well, I, well, I can assure you, and this is going to sound really funny to you, but I can assure you that when I need to be creative and I need to channel things, I listen to certain jams of yours. Wow. Right. So, I, you know, I listen to the Regency San Francisco Elmeg, for example, constantly. Right. The jam that I don't know if you remember it, the Regency Ballroom Elmeg was, I think, was spectacular. And when I need to be creative and write, you know, I'm a professor, I write. I listen to that. So, you know, I can, in a funny way, I know how to create set and setting by playing your music. <laughs> you know, I really, I can do it. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, I, I, I know exactly which jams I need to listen to for the right kind of uh, creativity. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I feel, uh, thank you. I, it's, you know, that's an honor. I, thank you. <laughs> now, um, uh, uh, songs like Madhavan, you know, have so much meaning. I don't know if you saw it, but I wrote a short piece explaining it for Goose fans. And, you know, I use my background in Hinduism. I'm a professor of this after all, right? And, and a lot of people, really, you know, a lot of people really appreciated it, but a lot of your fans have no idea what it is, right? They don't have any clue. And what, uh, what do you, what, how, how do you, what do you think of, of this kind of complexities that you had you have all kinds of ideas it's a great story and there's all kinds of meaning there and so many of your fans don't know really what's going on at all um and and do you meet, want them to know does it matter if they know what what to, what, what what do you think um you know kind of going back to what we were talking about before um you know i i my yeah. What I picture, what I think of is because there's two kind of, you know, it references the, the story of Druva, obviously. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of drawing that. But it's there's also another story there uh, of another person, you know. Um, right. And, th you know, that story, I, I don't I don't think I don't think it's the way to um, it, I don't think the way is is for you know, me to say, this is what the story is. And everyone right. should think about it this way. I, you know, right. I don't, right. this is back to the, to the point you made about preaching. Right. Right. Fair enough. That, Fair enough. And also, you know, um, what you, the point, you know, what you brought up initially was beyond language. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I, stories can sometimes bring me to that place of, of magic and, you know, elsewhere, it's, you know, like I, I love, I love fantasy. I, you know, I love, oh. um, Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I love worlds and stories and, and things that feel timeless, you know. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I like I prefer the notion of people making their own meaning and and right. And, right. and feeling what they because, you know, it's not it's not for me to to right. to right. Tell people what a song should make them feel like. Right, right. And then did you play Dungeons and Dragons when you were growing up? <laughs> I did not play Dungeons and Dragons, no. But, All right. Well, you can see how yeah. I would ask. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But something else I was wondering about too is that you said that you had listened to and had participated in some kirtans, right? Have you um, listened to, uh, you know, Hindustani or Carnatic classical music in, you know, Indian classical music? Uh, other than through like, I know that you're turned on by McLaughlin and, and like, you know, there's, there's all that energy is in there in some of some, you know, like Mahavishnu orchestra and so on. But I was wondering if, have you listened at all uh, to any of that kind of music? Um, some, I, I've sort of, you know, some of the, um, I, 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 there was a, a course or two. I studied ragas in, oh, cool. in, um, in, nice. in, in school, nice. which was nice. it, so cool. Nice. Um, nice. But I haven't, I haven't, I right. mean, right. I, I, I'm aware that that tradition is like the ultimate Kung Fu kid stuff. Like, it, you know, <laughs> like I've heard stories of, of, you know, sitar players uh, studying with a master and, you know, studying hard for years before they pick up the instrument. Right. right. So, right. you know any any bit that i've dabbled in in traditional indian indian music in that way is very very service level i would say okay. 
Like when you're yeah. having that, that epiphany when you're playing and you said that you are kind of a vessel for something, do you, do you, you, do you watch yourself play? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, are you, do you suddenly stand apart and you're like, wow, what is happening here? Look at this. As if you were possessed by something else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd say, I'd say that's the goal. That's, that's my goal. Um, wow, nice. Yeah. Um, sometimes I have that experience. I mean, I, I wouldn't say, I, you know, I literally, my astral body leaves my body and I, I'm looking at my body playing. I, I wouldn't say it's that extreme, but I do in terms of, a, you know, a feeling and sensation that, yeah, sometimes I'm, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing anything and it's great. <laughs> nice. Can you, can you name a, a, a recent venue or, or, or song that, where that happened to you? I mean, you may, uh, not, you may not, I mean, that's cool. We but, play so many shows now. Yeah, you do, you do. You play a ton of shows now. I know it's, it's like, a, it's all blending together. But, um, I mean, this past weekend in Atlanta, I, it felt very, it was very easy. You know, things were, things were just happening and I didn't have to fight or wrestle at all. And oh wow. so yeah, the, these, this last weekend in Atlanta felt great. I mean, that that's just the most recent moment right. that felt, right. epic, you know, right. um, right. How is how is first night at Dylan with that pouring rain, forty two degrees with that rain? I mean, it was really intense. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. How are you guys feeling? I was feeling I was feeling fine. I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, the the nerves were high that week oh. leading up to Red oh. Rock thing. You know, that was oh, that was big. There? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was you know, just the, the all the hype is right. distracting. You know? is, no, I can see that. Though you know, it's interesting. Dylan was 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 such a small show. Like there was so it was only three thousand people. It was so nice and small, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then consequently, going to Red Rocks, even though Red Rocks is such a beautiful venue, like I was, I really, really appreciated just how intimate things were at Dylan. Like it was a really nice venue. Yeah. Right? And and the narrative when we think about transformation and narrative, like the narrative of of suffering through that tremendous cold rain and everybody getting soaked, it was. And then the next day when it was like eighty five degrees, it was crazy. I mean, it was yeah, beautiful. it was really beautiful. I mean, it really yeah. was beautiful. But I'm sorry that it was so tense for you all. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's well, okay. It's it's like a rite of path. You know, yeah, I think yeah. that intimacy. I sort of believe it has less to do with the literal the crowd i mean I, I think production and stuff plays a part oh, 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 you know, obviously a show needs to sound good otherwise yeah, it's gonna yeah. it's, it's yeah. tough that's a tough hurdle to get over yeah. but i think intimacy has a lot more to do with the energy of the of the crowd and the band yeah. you know oh, um yeah. than the size of the crowd or the size right. of the venue you I know see. Cause i see the i see fish make the garden feel yeah. incredibly intimate so yeah, that's, 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 that's cool. me says that it's it's more about our energy and you know right. playing red rocks for the first time to a sold out crowd yeah. is i guess i mean it's it's a rite of passage we right. I, it wasn't realistic for us to be really calm really comfortable right um, right right you know right. at that at that point so right. um you know we just in those situations we just try to put on it, unfortunately we play the, the way we we play music with you know style of music we play and our approach to music is so highly uh influenced by our state how calm and, yeah. and how centered we are yeah. um you know because you can't uh yeah there's just, just a lot you can't access when you're tense like that you know whereas if we, if we just had a show where everything was mapped out we right. can go through we could go through the moves and right. you know, the energy would be there because it's a huge crowd and it would just be, it would just do its thing, but to spontaneously compose and, and have, have moments of realization and discovery. Um, and I haven't listened back to the show. I don't, I don't know if there were, if there were moments there, but I, uh -huh. I, I, I basically, you know, I 100% feel what you, what you mean in terms of the intimacy and um, the connection. I think if, if we are to keep growing, um, then yeah. my hope would be, you know, we do uh, multiple nights at Red Rocks or we just become comfortable with that yeah. size crowd right. to the point where it, that becomes the intimate thing, you know? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a three run at Red Rocks. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I mean, like even like Dylan, like, you know, Dylan felt, saying Dylan felt intimate 
3000 capacity venue, you know, a year or two ago did not feel intimate right, to us. You right, know? Right. That's right. That's right. No, that's, it's, it's interesting as you're growing like this and you know, this question, like as you grow like this, how, how, and, and the, the, the pressure on you becomes a little different. Like, you know, when you play, uh, hopefully you'll play Madison Square Garden soon or what have you, that, that will you be able to inhabit those spaces outside of language as in the same way or as easily? <laughs> And, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of um, how, you know, when suddenly the Grateful Dead became t- too big in 1987 and following, how Garcia just wasn't able to really be in those spaces that he wanted to be. You know, really? he, you know, he, you know, he expresses so much anxiety about having the responsibility of all these hundreds of thousands of fans. Whereas when he was playing smaller venues, he got to be himself, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's it's a, a real challenge as you become bigger and bigger as you guys are becoming to kind of uh, to to be to uh, to make sure that you can facilitate yourself being a vessel, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. It's a hard thing to do. This is yeah. This has been so beautiful. All all the things it comes with too that you don't I didn't expect. You know. Uh huh. Like, tell me, give me an example of something. Um, well, there's a lot of strange pressures that you don't, oh. that, that are easy to uh, miss, oh. not oh. be aware. You know what oh. I mean? Um, no, 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 it's, it's okay. Let, it's me just know, part let me know if I can help. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, there, I, I haven't quite put my finger on all of it yet because it, it is, it's a little bit intangible um but there's you know it's 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 the re i under i guess i could say that i understand how people arrived at these places where they were falling on drugs to uh as a crutch you know to you know like garcia was yeah using drugs to to escape whatever this the weird pressure that comes with it is you know right uh when you're a kid and you see you know trey up there doing his thing in front of all these tens of thousands of people and you're you know, it's just like the mute, they're, they're, they're crushing and it's really cool. And, you know, I don't know. I was like, yeah, that I want to do that. You know, uh, <laughs> you are doing that. <laughs> I, know. I know. Dude, you're doing that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like this, this is a lot of things I didn't, you know, think would, think, I didn't think about that would come with it. And, uh, you know, it's like a, sometime, <laughs> You know, like I built. Sometimes I think of like an analogy, like I built a big ship, you know, uh, like a big cruise ship, um, because <laughs> I saw lots of reasons why that was a, that was a, that would be a great thing to do. Um, and then sometimes I feel like I I didn't I, I forgot to c- calculate into that that I I need I still need to show up to the cruise ship every day. <laughs> you know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully you have a room to yourself at least, and a with a you know, you know, you have a yeah. space like that. Do you do you meditate? What do you do to chill out? That, um, not really, right now. Uh, oh. I haven't I haven't for a while. You know, oh. so now I've you know for the past oh. year I've been in the process of of kind of re, um, regrounding. I guess re 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 rerooting who myself and like re re reclaiming myself in certain ways. Um, so, uh, part of that is, is, um, is seeking what the practice that I'm aligned with right now is, uh, because I've been disconnected from any type of real practice for a while. Oh, wow. That's heavy. I mean, it sounds like you're revisiting some of the same sort of internal reflection that, uh, that you experienced when you went to and came out of Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. uh, definitely moving in or seeking that direction again. Um, the, you know, the blaring thing in that regard is that I had nothing but time then. And now I had, I don't have time. So I, I need, I'm going to have to figure out ways to, um, just, just be really intentional and, and, um, disciplined about my time when I do have time. Oh, uh, well, yeah. then I, go ahead, I go had ahead. time to watch cartoons and then, you know, practice spirituality and write songs when I felt like it. And right. now it's, you know, oh. I don't have, I don't have that luxury. So, yeah. Right. But yeah. you know, you know, Rick, if, if you, if you take a tumble, if you take a spill, yeah. <laughs> it's a lesson. <laughs> of, 
<laughs> but, but you know, I think that it sounds to me, um, saying as you know, as a friend, I hope that you think I'm a friend now, but that you should you should probably create scenarios in your tour such that um, that you take a few, you know, a, a few mo- a month or so between tours off where you actually get to, and and you didn't really do that post summer, like you still were jamming. I mean, it was pretty continuous. Well, so the reason I did that is because I'm building a studio at my house. Um, oh, how nice. So I, I, you know, I took a bunch of gigs to pay for it. Um, oh, how nice. But there's intention there. So I'm kind of uh, creating a, uh, a chamber of secrets for myself to, nice. to go and, and do exactly what you're talking about. Right. But, so then you'll have that private room in the cruise ship. That's, um, that's, that's the hope. That's the hope. Right. Yeah. And, and you, yeah, you're not able to do that now. I mean, now you're, you know, you're traveling with your, the whole group and you probably don't have very much time for yourself other than when you're, you know, in the bathroom or something like that. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. That's, that's, well, you know, that's tour life, I suppose. I mean, all the, like, you know, Frank Zappa sings about tour life. Everybody sings about, you know, being on the road and traveling. It, right. I mean, it, it can't be very easy. Um, you know, I, I, I hope that, that, that even when you're in the tour and you're on the bus or in the plane that, you know, you put your headphones on and you're able to kind of create a meditative space, close your eyes like you do when you're playing and, and see if you can kind of um, enter that, that private space, that private room in the cruise ship. Yeah. 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 I, I like that. Uh, I like that image. I like that visualization of, right. you know, there's right. like this, comfort to it you know right i mean i could advise you to listen to that jam in elmeg but you already know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's different there are, there's there's other musics that bring yeah. bring me there yeah. although exactly. would love to get some recommendations from you on um, the traditional oh, oh yeah but, sure yeah i'll send you some stuff for sure i'll send you some I, I i didn't realize that dave had sent your email and your your gmail rather and i can send you i don't want to you know bother you like that but i can send you a few things here and there um, yeah, you know, it's interesting is that, that my dad was a uh, founding member of a, a uh, South Indian classical music association in, in, uh, in uh, New York State, in New York. And it became very big, right? I mean, they invited all kinds of people. So I used to always listen to, his, to the music that, that he was playing. And it's all kind of improvisational, right? So they'll be, and, but they'll do improv with their voice and all. And I got a really fine ear for that. Like I can really listen to it. Not everybody can listen to this improvisational music. And it's no doubt that listening to that led me to being able to appreciate McLaughlin, the Grateful Dead, and what have you, right? And so I, I think that, that, that it, when we think about those kind of that vessel that you're, you're creating is that that improvisational creative space that musicians like you are able to inhabit and create, we find the Indian musicians creating a very similar space, I think. Right. And, 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 and I can, I mean, I'm, 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 sh- I'm likely projecting and you'll tell me that I'm projecting, but I yep. hear, I hear ragas in born or in, I mean, I hear it. Like, I'm like, wow, man, this guy is playing some raga action here. Right. And, and hey, I, I, I remember the thought that I, that I had prior earlier when I, when I blanked on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's up? You know, I, 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 you know, I remember, I think back to the time when, um, George Harrison had Ravi Shankar come yeah. uh, and, you know, perform there. And mm-hmm. there's this big rowdy crowd. It's the sixties. Everyone's tuned up. Everyone's, you know, on drugs and drinking and, and partying and have a great time. Like, you know, and they're, they're seeking, you know, people are seeking this, this thing and just don't know enough about how, you know, what exactly what they're really seeking, you know, think they're right. seeking other things. And, um, but really we're all looking for that connection, I guess is a, is a word, but, um, you know, they, they try to explain it during, and during that, you know, there's a, there's a DVD about uh, from yeah. that show, but they, yeah. they tried to explain to the people like, Hey, what we do, there's a different intention to what we do. And, you know, it's not like party time, like everyone, you guys should chill out and just kind of like, this is what the intention is of how we play music. Um, and you know, the way in which that was received I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly. I mean, maybe it was received sort of well, but, um, you know, people, people chilled out a little bit, but still, you know, people, 
it's it's the same thing. Like, I, I, it's something I thought about a lot. People, you know, when we grew up, I, I, I grew up like playing bar shows and our friends would come to the bars and they'd be drunk and want us to, you know, want to have a good time. And, uh, but at the same time, like, you know, I, so I guess what I'm, uh, you know, I'm fumbling to get at is uh, that this, this idea of, being covert about it or packaging it in, in as something oh i see what you're packaging saying. it as something that is appealing there's, there's people that, that people came for kind of kind of thing right. but it's there and it's not it's not being forced upon anyone but it's just there you know yeah. right it's an upaya it's a skillful means to get people towards transformation rather than recreation or something like that yeah um nice. it, at a certain point, I, I early on, I heard the phrase, you know, and like the, I, this is I take this with a grain of salt because like the I, the sure. self importance thing, I get, you know, I, I, I get uncomfortable. It's all good, man. It's making all good. any kind of making any kind of statement that's like I, I think of what I'm doing is the thing, you know. But um, this this uh, this con this idea of you know what people need the way they want it. Um, Oh. Uh, it became became an, an, a goal, I guess you could say, an intention. You know, to because you know, I, I think, I think, you know, back to what we were talking about before, just the amount of numbing agents and and distractions and um, things that take you out of yourself, your your real self, um, uh, whatever that means in in today's world, or just you know, there, there's it's becoming more and more inundated with that. So anything to open hearts and and to um, bring in energies and, and bring us closer to that place with, of, you know, without language. I love, I love that, that term. I love that um, way of referring to it, but um, yeah, anything of that nature, I I think is what we all need, whether we know it or not. Nice. So uh, yeah, intention. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I think that sometimes people refer to that place outside of language as mystical experience. Yeah. Right. And I think that's beautiful what you're what you're what you're describing. And I should say that 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 um, that I I don't go to your shows to have fun. I go there to be transformed. I mean, I go there to be to have that experience. That's why I go there. That's it. Like I that is why I changed the ticket to Kansas City. It's like when you hit that jam, Rick, and you do it so well, like I just want to I go there. I can't explain it, but I go there. And you are the vessel that facilitates many of us going there. You really are. Well, yeah. that, that's an honor. And, you know, hearing things like that, um, yeah. I guess if nothing else, it, it just affirms yeah. that it's, uh, it's worth, it's worthwhile. It's, it's worth it. it. Yeah. You are, you are having the effect of your intention and you really, you, it's, 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 it's a real gift to be able to speak to somebody who's got the creative capacity that you do and to ask you about it. I'm so grateful to you for spending this time with me. I, I can't even, I have been wondering about this for a long time and I, I can't believe I've gotten the opportunity to ask you in person, sort of like, it's, um, it's a, I feel so, so lucky. I really well, feel lucky to you. It was uh, really wonderful to meet you. I would love to stay in touch, and I, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that you could exp- that you could you sure. know. Sure, uh, would, it yeah. would be an honor. It would be an honor. I'm afraid that is I'm I, I don't I mean I'm an old guy now. I'm fifty. I'll be fifty three in a couple of weeks, and I can't ever ride the rail, right? So you won't ever oh, see yeah. me in the front. Like you will not see me in the front. But but I will be there in Kansas City, right? <laughs> but if there's ever an opportunity that you want, you know, have this kind of conversation again you know, off record or on record, you know, it's all good to me. Like I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. You and Goose have changed my life. And I, um, really, do, I really do listen to that Regency Elmick at least once a day. And you um, take everybody there in who attended that to some other place. Like it really is pretty cool. You were definitely a vessel then. I don't know if you remember it, but you definitely were a vessel then. But it, it has been such a tremendous pleasure. I, I can't even, I'm, I'm speechless, right? Thank you. And I'm, I'm psyched to see you in Kansas city or let me see you see, see the band in Kansas city. 
right? Think about that. Your music has already yeah. facilitated great things happening in the world. Right. It really has. Thank you. And I, 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 you know, I'll, I'm excited to hear you all in Kansas city. Of course, I'm wondering now what the set list is going to be. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell you. Won't know, until, won't know until about 6 PM that night, but yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell yeah. you, I'm going to enjoy it in every way possible. And uh, when you close your eyes, Rick, you know what I'll do? I'll be closing my eyes too. <laughs> all right. So to be, con- to, be, to be continued. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Rick. It has been a pleasure. I'm going to show this video to my class. I think they've uh, they are they'll be very curious. We've been thinking about some of the same things that you're de- that you're describing and, and talking about. And until next time, um, I'll uh, be well, and thank may you. you continue to be the vessel for this great beyond. <laughs> all right, you are. All, it's wonderful. I'll see you. I mean, I won't. I mean, I'll see you in Kansas City. You probably won't see me. I'll try and make it up to the rail just to say hello. <laughs> All right. That's good. All right. Lots of love. So much. So many Wonderful things. Wonderful meeting you. Thank you so much for, for everything that you're doing. All right. Lots of love, Rick. Bye.